Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Good morning, Brother Ken. Good morning to those who are joining us for our morning's devotion. Trying to get this page straightened out here. Morning, Brother Demetrius. Good morning, people of God. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining. It's 17 past. So we'll go ahead and start. Thank you this morning for taking the time out to join us in our morning this in this morning's devotion. Let us open in a word of a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. God, we bless your name. We magnify your name. God, we lift you up. Lord, your name is great and greatly to be praised. We thank you, Lord, that we're in the land of the living. We thank you, Lord, that we are alive and well. We thank you that we are breathing. We thank you, mighty God, for all of the things that you have done for us. Father, we are so grateful. Father, we are so thankful. We are so thankful, Father. Thankful, mighty God, in spite of what's going on in our lives and all around us father we just want to thank you your word says that we should give thanks first thessalonians 5 17 we should give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of god concerning us in christ jesus so we give you thanks god we honor you and bless your father as we come to hear your word this morning I pray your word, O oh God, will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. I pray that we will hide your words, O oh God, in our hearts so that we may not sin against you. Father, we pray for the word that will be sent out this morning. I pray that it will fall on good ground. I pray, O oh God, for those who will hear that they will be doers of the word and not hearers only. I just give you thanks for each and every one that is watching, that is listening this morning. I thank you for their very life, and I thank you for what you're going to do in their lives. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Good morning, Minister Mashira. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Today, my devotion topic, it is, what is my kingdom assignment? What is my kingdom assignment? And that is something that we should all think about or, or ponder upon or something that we should already know. Or maybe if we don't know it yet, we should know it real soon. What is our kingdom assignment? So before I get into today, get into today's devotion, I want to um, uh, greet our lead servants. I give I give honor to our lead servants, uh, Aramis and Rosanna Hines. God bless them. God bless you. Um, and also, I want to thank God for giving me another opportunity again to come before. Um, you to lead this morning's devotion. Amen. All right. Again, my topic today is what is your kingdom assignment? All right. What is it that is God is calling you to do? Do you already know it? Um, do you have an idea? You, um, or you have not discovered it? You have not um, figured out what your purpose is here on earth? Uh, let me tell you, all of us have a purpose. We don't just l exist. We're not here just to exist and to take up space, but we are here to, to, to occupy. We are here to um, take over. We are here to do what God has called and designed for us to do. Each and every one of us have a purpose here on this earth. So we want to make sure that um, in the end, we can say that 
Uh, we want God to say, well done, good and faithful servant. And uh, um, we want to make sure that we are fulfilling our assignment. So are you shying away from your purpose and your calling? It could be that you already know your calling, but you're shying away from your purpose and calling. We're going to deal with those issues here this morning. Have you been doing what God is telling you to do? Or are you making excuses? In Jeremiah 1 verse 6, he said, I am only a child. Jeremiah 1, he said, I am only a child. When God called him, he, in verse 4, it says, Jeremiah 1, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I, I appointed you. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, this is Jeremiah, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Verse 8 says, do not be afraid of them for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. So don't say you're too young, you're too old. Um, I don't have the knowledge, I don't have the skills or whatever. Once you say yes to God, once you say yes to your assignment, God will make provision, God will make the way. So if you think you're too old, God will make provision. If you think you're too young, God will make provision. All that God requires is a yes. It's not um, about what we know. You, know. you know, there's a saying that says, God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the call. So you don't have to be qualified. Oh, um, if God calls you to be a teacher, he's not necessarily sending you to seminary to... to, to, to um, to be a teacher um, of his word. If he calls you, you all you need is a yes. You need a resounding yes, and the Holy Spirit will take over and do what he, um, he wants you to do. He will give you the inspiration, he will give you the knowledge, he will give you the wisdom, he will equip you with everything that you need to be um, a teacher or whatever God has called you to do. So don't make excuses. Um, is it that you are not, it could be that, is it that, that you have not yet discovered your kingdom assignment or you know about your kingdom assignment, but you're running from it like Jonah. Do we have any Jonas here on the line this morning? Don't put your hands up. But Jonah 1, verse 1, it says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Because its wickedness has come before me. Verse 2 says, verse 3 says, But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. And I will stop there. Are you running from your assignment? What is God calling you to do? But you're saying, God, I'm not going to go to deal with those wicked people. I'm not going to go say that. I'm not going to go do this. Um, what is God calling you to do? And you're running away from your assignment. If that is you this morning, I urge you, I plead, I beg with you, don't run like Jonah. Because guess what? God is coming after you. He is chasing after you. Um, if, for those who know the story of Jonah, Jonah, he thought he could run away from God. Come on, God is the creator of the ever and, and, and earth. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He he is everywhere. He is omnipresent and omniscient, all knowing. And guess what? Jonah thought he could run away from God, run away from his assignment. But God caught him. He put him in the belly of the whale. He went on a ship. Um, we, um, went over, they threw him over, um, he went into the belly of the whale and he stayed there a couple of days and nights and he had, <laughs> he had that, that moment with God he, where he said like, you know, I have to give up, I'm just going to surrender. And after, and you know, sometimes God have to, to, to um, when we run away from our calling, 
God has to give us some Jonah experiences so that we can come out and be what he has called us to be. He is running after us. He's chasing after us. He says, Simone. He's saying, Ken. He's saying, Demetrius. He's saying, Mashera. Or for those who is listening, don't run after your, don't run away from your assignment, but run to God. I will make the provisions for you. I will equip you. I will give you what you need for your assignment. You don't want to live a life most miserable. You don't want to 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 um know that you're not fulfilling your calling because you're walking in disobedience um or you just doing what you want to do a lot of us we already have discovered and we know our assignment what God has called us to to do but we are we are just afraid we are we, we don't feel like we should be doing this it's not what god has called us to do but let me let me just go ahead i'm kind of jumping ahead of myself here again for those who are just joining us this morning our topic is what is my kingdom assignment what is my kingdom assignment all right so we just talk about jonah he discovered his calling god called him to go and preach and he ran away some of us when god reveals his purpose for our lives we don't want to do it me god you want me to clean the bathrooms up for the church me you want me to wash people's dirty feet look at those toes oh my gosh ew you want me to stand up and be an usher me in my pretty shoes you know oh no god god you know that I, you know i can't do it god me god you want me to go out and feed the poor me feed the poor and let my friends see me no lord i'm not doing it you want me oh god to do prison ministry me god who me you must be talking to somebody else god you want me to go in the hood and minister to the gangsters and drug dealers me god me ministering to the prostitutes oh lord don't send me oh god send someone else send someone else is that you today God is calling you to do something for the kingdom of God. God is calling you to do your kingdom assignment. But you're saying, me, Lord, not me, Lord, send somebody else. But God is calling you, you right now that's watching, that's listening. Yes, I'm talking to you. God is calling you to, to, to fulfill your kingdom assignment. A lot of us, we want the blessings, but we don't want to do our kingdom assignments. That's contrary. We have to be obedient. We want the favor of God, but fail to obey him. Hello, somebody. We want God to move mountains on our behalf, and we don't even ex exercise a mustard seed of faith. Hello? We want the blessings, but we don't want to obey. We want the favor. We want God to move mountains. We want God to move mountains, and we're not even exercising our faith. What is your kingdom assignment? Oh, gosh. I click out the wrong of the okay all right I'm back uh, I'm sorry I clicked off the screen I'm um, here I'm sorry about that stop wasting your life stop making excuses the time is at hand walk in your purpose and calling too many of us are just existing too many people have died that did not fulfill their kingdom assignment. Again, too many people, some of us, we are just existing, and too many people have died not fulfilling their kingdom assignment. By the way, before you were born, your kingdom assignment was established. If you read in Psalms 139 and verse 6. I don't want to just give you words. I want to read it. We have time. We're going to read it. <laughs> just in case you don't get to turn to the scripture, I want to read it. So uh, when you hear it, be doers of the word and not hearers only. So verse 16 says, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. All of us have an assignment before we were even born, before we were even thought about, before we were even conceived in our mother's womb. We have an assignment. God has an assignment for all of us. So what is your excuse this morning? If you're just joining us, we're talking about kingdom assignment. What is your kingdom assignment? It was... 
our kingdom assignment again was established before we were even born. It was for us to seek the it, right now. If we don't know what our kingdom assignment is, we have to seek the Lord and call up him, call upon him so he can show us great and mighty things that we know not of. Seek the Lord, seek God's presence. And that, that I just quoted Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. Let us continue. God has different assignments for each and every one of us. Some he has called to preach, some he has called to teach, some otherwise. But God has called us to each and every one of us for our kingdom assignment. For a kingdom assignment. And let me go to the scriptures here. Ephesians 4 verse 11 says, So Christ himself, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teacher, the pastors, and the preachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So it's not limited here. It talks about um, five, uh, five giftings, but it's not limited to five teachers, prophets, and evangelists, and so on. Um, God, um, there are different, different kind of kinds of gifts. This was just an, some examples. And if you um, go back to the, the the title of of today's devotion, you will see the scriptures. I um, I posted scriptures talking about the the various gifts. Ephesians four verse eleven to fourteen, which I just read. First Corinthians four twelve verse four to eleven, and Romans twelve verses three to eight. In the end, all of our assignments, whether we clean the bathroom, whether we feed the poor, whether we stand at the, the church door uh, and, and, and we usher um, people into God's presence or we, we, we preach or we teach, all of our kingdom assignments lead, should lead people to Christ. It's not to ourselves, but to Christ and our lead servant um Armis Hines he will always say I don't he he would always say I don't lead people to myself I lead people to Christ and that's what he does he pushes us and say hey don't don't he's not leading people to him he's leading people he le he's leading us to to Christ your kingdom assignment it in it, it, it incorporates every facet of your life. So whether you're in the workplace, whether you're at school, whether it is at home, in your neighborhood, in your community, you're at the grocery store, all your kingdom assignment incorporates every aspect of your life. So if God has called you to be a preacher or a teacher or evangelist or whatever it is, uh, it's not, <laughs> it's not, and the gifts is not really for uh, everything is for inside the church, for edify the church. You, the Bible says in Matthew 28, go out, go and preach and to make disciples. So you're not a, oh, I'm just an evangelist when I'm at church. But you see, I'm a, when I'm at work, baby girl, I am, I am Simone. I just do what I do. Or when I'm out in the streets, I do what I do. Uh, I, and then when I come back to church on Sunday morning, then I'm an evangelist, then I'm a preacher, then I'm a, 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 a usher, whatever it is. No, every facet, every aspect of our lives, it incorporates our kingdom assignment. So whether it's in the grocery store or wherever, the Lord will give you. Again, you don't lead people to yourself. You lead people to Christ. So you, the Lord will lead it to say, hey, go minister to that person. Go... Um, assist that person don't go whatever the holy spirit will tell you what to do when to do and how to do it we just have to follow the leading um and, and of the holy spirit and the question is can we have more than one kingdom assignment absolutely yes you could be gifted to preach and to sing like our our pastor um, and, and Pastor Chantel and many others are gifted to preach and to sing. Um, the, you could be gifted to have a, a, a ministry of administration and hospitality or, or a ministry of encouragement or it could be an usher and a Sunday school teacher. Yes, you can um, have more than one um, uh, uh, gifts or kingdom assignment. God didn't give us the gifts and talents so that we can keep it to ourselves. He gave the gifts so that we can edify others and so that we can in the end glorify him. 
all our gifts are for the body of Christ, for the building and for the edification of the body. We are one body. I read that earlier in, I believe, in Ephesians. Uh, we are one body, but each of us have a separate function. It is not for us to keep what we know and then nobody knows about it. Oh, I'm a singer for the Lord. I will just sing when I'm at home or sing in the bathroom. God has called me to sing, but he doesn't if God calls you to sing, sing, he didn't call you for bathroom ministry to sing in the bathroom. He called you to sing so that people can hear and so that people can be edified and so that people can can uh, um, be encouraged. So if God calls you to sing, it's not for bathroom ministry where you and you just sing. No, no, no. It's for so that people you you got to use your gifts and your talents. What God has given you, you use it for the glory of God um so we don't want any undercover christians god called it to be an evangelist oh i don't want anybody to know i'm an evangelist um you know that kind of thing no undercover thing right here but all of our gifts are for the body of christ i guess it's we're again we're one body the eyes have a different function the eyes is to see the mouth is to speak the ear is to hear the hands to do things and all of us have different functions some of us are the eyes some of us are the mouthpiece some of us are the ear and and the hands and the feet and so on all of us have gifts at breakers our pastor pastor Armis has always emphasized um servanthood jesus was our great example and or when when you're talking about kingdom assignment kingdom assignment is servanthood all right jesus was our great example he served he, he served people he fed the poor he healed the sick he raised the dead he cast out demons and showed people the light of christ so that they can come out of darkness as an as as an example um he, sh um, he was an our example um and he served so um so if he served, that means that we should serve and give ourselves to God. I want to read real quick. Mark, Mark 10. Mark 10. And time is upon me. Mark 10 verses. Um, Mark 10 verses 43 to 45. Real quick. Um, it reads. Verse 43. Um, Jesus was talking about serving others here. And, um, and uh, so on and so forth. But taking it from verse 43 you have to probably go back to verse 40, 35 but from word of verse 43 jesus says not so with you uh let me just read it when the ten heard this they became indign indignant with james and john um they were talking about they were arguing who would sit on the right and who would sit sit on the left um jesus called them together and said you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them not so with you instead whoever wants to be become great among you must be your servant and whoever wants to be the first must be slave of all and verse 5 45 the key verse for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many so we are all servants of christ we are servants of the living god so don't think that you you're not called to serve don't think that you're just called to attend church on a sunday morning and to warm the pews that's not your assignment nobody god has not ordained or assigned anybody for um bench warming ministry there is no such thing as bench warming ministry all right god has called us to get up off our behind and and do what he has called us to do in order for us to have kingdom authority all right so um, i talk about jesus as an our example mark 10 verse 43 to 45 and um first peter 4 verse 10 i'm wrapping up soon in order for you to have kingdom authority you first have to know what is your kingdom assignment a lot of us want authority <laughs> right we want to cast out demons we want to do this we want to do that but um have you been doing what god has called you to do you need to in order for you to have kingdom authority you have to 
first be doing your kingdom assignment. For example, God called Moses to free his people. Moses accepted his assignment, and as a result, the, um, the need right and as the need arise um, God gave Moses kingdom authority he gave him authority to speak to Pharaoh telling him that the high I am that the I am sent him he used his kingdom authority Moses that is to turn the rod into a snake he turned he used his kingdom authority to part the Red Sea he used Moses that is his kingdom authority to lead the people to the promised land you can't have kingdom authority unless you know what your kingdom assignment is otherwise you will misuse and abuse it all right you have to know what is your kingdom assignment in order for you to utilize your kingdom authority a lot of us are not equipped in the spirit god um we want to be discerned we have to want have discernment we want to do this and we want to do that but we are not walking in obedience <clears throat> We are not even fulfilling our kingdom assignments, but we want the blessings and the favor of God, and we want this, that, and, and mountaintop experience, but we don't want um, to fulfill our kingdom assignment, and that is contrary. We want kingdom and authority. We want kingdom authority and kingdom blessings, but we don't want to obey and do what God has called us and instructed us to do. It doesn't work that way. When we do what God has called us to do, then the provisions will come then the blessings will come then the equipping will come then the authority will come all right so this morning do you know what god has called you to do are you walking in your kingdom assignment and how do you know that you already have a kingdom assignment there are so there are some people that they know their kingdom assignment but they're not walking in their kingdom assignment some people have not um have not discovered their kingdom assignment again they're just existing some people have not discovered their kingdom assignment and they um so with that said they have to you have to do a couple of things and i'm going to get into that so your gift is imparted to you every gift that you have your kingdom assignment is imparted to you by the holy spirit the Bible says to covet earnestly the best gifts, 1 Corinthians 12, and your best gifts suits what you do, all right? How to get to know your kingdom assignment. So if you have not yet discovered your kingdom assignment, so let me say, back up. If you already know your kingdom assignment, walk in it. You don't need another sermon. You don't need um, the pastor to come to you. You don't need an evangelist or a prophet to come to you to say, walk in your kingdom assignment. Just be obedient for crying out loud. Just be obedient and walk in your assignment. You don't need anybody to come anoint you with oil and to pray. And, and, and that has its place. But some of us, we are walking in disobedience. We know our assignment, but we are running just like John stop running stop running because guess what all you're gonna do is just weary yourself oh you're gonna get weary but guess what God is not gonna give up he is gonna keep running after you he's going to keep on chasing you so so just give up just surrender uh, as Pastor Patricia would say surrender to the purpose just surrender to the Holy Spirit just say I give up and I surrender to God and I'm going to do what God has called me to do just like Jonah did so if you don't know your kingdom assignment how to get to know your kingdom assignment one you ask God you pray you ask God Jeremiah 20, 33 verse 3 says call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things you know not of um, you can ask God secondly it can come by revelation third you, you, you need to have faith to operate in your gift and your assignment again some of us we know what we're supposed to do but we're afraid we have fear i mean god said he has not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and of a sound mind i remember one time god called me to stand up on the plane last year at the beginning of COVID, on my way back from jamaica the lord said <clears throat> From a, a mission trip in Jamaica, the Lord said, I want you to stand up on the plane and tell the people to fear not. I'm saying, me, Lord, me, you're talking to me, Jesus. And 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 I <laughs> and I made all the excuses in the world. I even delayed the plane because when we hit the tarmac, um, the plane landed 
it took about there was no jetway there was about 20 25 minutes i'm not exaggerating before a jetway come and i was the one that was holding up the plane because god said i should do something and i was holding up the plane like god no no not me god i may get arrested i might this that and other i mean i can't talk about that story about another time but in the end i said god i'm gonna do it i just opened up my mouth and i told the people um, what God told me to do this again, the beginning of COVID coming back from Jamaica, March 16 of 2020. Um, the Lord said to tell his people on the plane to fear not, fear not, fear not. And I did what God told me to do. <laughs> Anyways, I can talk about that experience another time. Again, you just need to have faith to operate in your assignment. So first, I want to, to get to you know your kingdom assignment. Uh, my time is up. Ask God. It can come by revelation. Um, have faith to operate in your gift and assignment. It can be natural inclinations um, in terms of you, you're, you're, you're gifted in, in singing and teaching and encouragement. Or it could be that something that you are already doing really good and you don't even realize it that it is a gift from God. And maybe your pastor or ministry leaders can help you to hone those gifts or help you to identify identify, identify those gifts or help help you to identify your assignment most and foremost see god in the word the word of god the one the answer it's not purpose-driven life it's not purpose-driven life is your is your answer the word here is there is your answer if you want revelation if you want what god wants you to do find out um find out what the word says it's not purpose-driven life and i'm not knocking any books or anything books are good because they edify and they help to build uh, build you up spiritually all right but what we need is to seek god in his word so today operate in your calling operate in your kingdom assignment so that the church can be edified the devil horrified and that god will be glorified so i challenge you this morning go out and fulfill your god-given purpose fulfill your assignment in jesus name have a god-blessed day and go do what god has called you to do god bless you